So this question is about transition elements. So we know that the definition of a transition element as stated in the syllabus is that uh, it forms compounds where one or more of its ions where so basically it forms a compound where one or more of its ions have incompletely filled incompletely filled also mean partially filled so you can use either of these words partially filled or incompletely filled the subshells or the orbital the next question nh 3 acts as a monodentic ligand there are two bits to this definition mono there refers to one time dative covalent bond and this is one time dative covalent bond per ligand but what is the definition of the ligand there well you need to form the dative covalent bond to the metal center which could be an ion which could be a metal so they say in terms of the nh3 so the nh3 has one long pair on the nitrogen this lone pair can well the one lone pair can therefore nh3 can form one dative covalent bond if you don't like to use the word dative covalent bond you can use the word coordinate bond as stated in the syllabus also in as chemistry as part of dative covalent bonding but you can use either of these words both of them are equally acceptable you don't have to write both of them so they can form one this is very important one dative covalent bond per nh3 molecule that means per ligand species there which in this case is a molecule but it could also be an ion in other cases of ligands and this is formed active covalent bond to the metal center not necessarily transition metal it can just be a metal center which could be a metal ion or metal atom so i just write atom or ion there so what is important is you only form one dative covalent bond per ligand molecule and this is from a dative covalent bond to the metal center which could be atom or ion there uh what else oh yeah i did mention that the lone pair is one lone pair of electrons so that should be enough for that monodentate definition there anyway on to the next part aqueous silver ions this is essentially making the tolerance reagent not too sure if a lot of students know that tolerance reagent you can make tolerance reagents by uh, by reacting ag plus with aqueous ammonia so what happened then is ag and then you have two of that ammonia in this linear complex so what happened is this is a ag plus and then the nh3 uses the lone pair to form a dative covalent bond you need two of them and this is 180 degree linear complex it's a case study this is the active ingredient this is colorless intolerance reagent which acts as an oxidizing agent for aldehyde and doesn't work for ketones or any other group only works for aldehyde and its serve will get reduced from silver plus one to give you the silver mirror which is silver zero the next question there are two isomeric complex ions this is chromium with four ammonia and two chlorine so one of them is green and the other one is violet so what is this type of isomerism well, if you think about it you have two chlorides so your chloride can be 180 degree to each other in this octahedral environment so that you get nh3 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 like that and this one is a two whoops sorry there's a plus so a chloride is cl minus and cl minus nh3 doesn't have any charge so this is chromium plus three by the way chromium three plus species chromium oxidation number of plus three there but as you can see the chlorine there and the chlorine there these are 90 degree and this is 90 degree so they are separated by 180 degree this is a trans isomer you could draw the cis isomer where the chlorine can be 90 degree to this chlorine or it could be there it could be there it could be there i am not going to draw the cis isomer but hopefully you can see this is a geometric isomerism so a geometric isomerism is what give you what give rise to that cis and trans isomerism uh, where the two chlorine there it can be 180 degree to each other like this or it can be 90 degree to each other like that all right 
The next bit is about why transition metals uh, complexes have different colors. You see the distribution of four marks. You have one mark for that, three marks for this. This is a fixed essay, a common essay. I think I've got all of these in the topical playlist on the transition metals. You should really be uh, uh, ready with this kind of stuff. But there are two things here. Why they are colored, that one is typical. Why they have different colors. So we need to be very careful and, and uh, explain this fully. So what we can say is uh, d orbitals in the presence of ligands in the presence of ligands so we know that the degenerate degenerate meaning orbitals are of the same energy and we know the degenerate d orbitals they started out with the same energy they will split they will split into two sets or two energy levels separated by an energy gap and this energy gap you can call it delta e and is equal to hf equal to hc over lambda absorbed so this h there h is equal to Planck constant it's just a constant uh, number f is the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation and as such you can relate c is equal to f lambda for an electromagnetic radiation and we are specifically talking about the visible light region because we are seeing colors so you know uh for oops sorry not photons so the electrons in the lower energy level so they split into three and two uh, energy level set. So the electrons in the lower energy level, they can, they can, uh, what do they say? Eh? Uh, they can get promoted, they can get excited, excited or promoted to the higher energy level. And what do they need to do? They need to absorb, they absorb photons so these are light photons visible light in the visible light region the visible light regions is the regibif the red or the way to violet in the electromagnetic radiation spectrum and why do they have different colors now they have different colors as a result of this energy gap we just talked about so these complex ions we cannot say they have different ligands. That is one thing you cannot say because these are isomers. So both the cis and the trans would have, you know, would have the exact same number of chloride. We have the exact same number of NH3. So it's not like we are substituting the NH3 or the chloride with something else. We have isomers and these isomers have the same molecular formula as well as structural formula because geometric is just different arrangement in space, right? So uh, why, why different colors? So different colors because, well, we can say, actually, what can we say? Um, different colors due to absorption, absorption of uh, visible light in different wavelength, visible light of different wavelength. And this is down to different geometry because due to uh, actually different geometry since they are of different geometry since uh, different geometry so here is where i could sketch what i'm trying to talk about i guess so here if this is trans so the trans you can see the dipoles do get cancelled out not that we are talking about dipoles because we are not talking about polarity we are trying to talk about the we're trying to talk about different colors right but there is there is a different absorption as a result of you know different different ways in which you position the chloride and chloride that is 90 degree there so that is 90 degree and that is 90 degree so altogether they are separated by 180 degree in the trans isomer and they are not separated by 180 in the cis they are separated by 90 degree in the cis isomer and these two would absorb visible light in different wavelength when you absorb different wavelength you have different energy gap and therefore well essentially different energy gap <laughs> result in different wavelength we absorb that's why you see different colors for the cis and the trans complexes okay one thing you cannot say is you cannot definitely say uh, different ligands you do not have different ligands you have the exact same ligand because these are 
isomers. I guess that is where the trick of this question comes in. All right. Now the next question, this is about a different uh, different isomerism. This is E N. So E N there is E ten one two diamine. It is a bidentate ligand. So monodentate ligand forms a single a single dative covalent bond from one dative covalent bond per ligand molecule. This one has two lone pairs that can form two dative covalent bonds per ligand molecule or ion to the metal center. So we have to draw three dimensional diagrams. So we know that it is octahedral since we have a coordination number of six because you have three of the bidentate ligand. If you have three of the bidentate ligand, you have to have six coordination number. That means a total of uh, six dative covalent bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I might not have counted that correctly, but you can see that I have uh, definitely shown six dative covalent bond there. So the, the bolded lines that's coming up from the screen towards you, pointing towards you, this is pointing away from you. These are these are dash line. They are pointing away from you behind the screen. And then the flat one, they are in the plane of the screen. They're in the plane of the paper. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put in the NH2. Well, the N, the N, the N, and the N. So if I pretend this is my mirror image, because I'm going to draw non-super impossible mirror images, there's the definition of optical isomers. We do not need to have a chiral cupboard because this is optical isomers of transition metal complexes. I'm going to draw skeletal formula. So if I just draw them like that, and you know, it's got to be next to each other. It cannot be 180 degree to each other because the two carbon is not long enough to stretch around 180 degree like that. That's why it's bound between uh, two nitrogen that are 90 degree to each other like that. This is not the only way to draw it. I could have drawn like that, like that, and like that. You could draw any format as long as they are 90 degree to each other. My diagram is not complete. This is skeletal. I must show the hydrogen. I must show the hydrogen on the nitrogen because the molecule they have given me is NH2 on both N. They didn't say I can use EN. They didn't say that even though they're expressed as EN, but I'm just drawing my diagram like that just to be safe. This thing is the furthest away. So I will get the furthest away mirror images like that. And then this thing here is here. This one is to this one. So what I get is like that. So I am just simply projecting the mirror images. I'm not doing anything special. This goes to that, this mirror project to that. These are my two non-super impossible, non-super impossible mirror images of each other, optical isomers of transition metal complexes there. The next question, uh, this is not about bidentate ligands, but this is about bronsted lowry base as definitions. This is called a proton acceptor. If you look at the question, this is about plural. So we need to show not just accepting one proton on one amino group, but on both the amino group. So we know that a bronsted lowry acid, uh, not acid, but bronsted lowry base is a proton acceptor. So proton meaning H plus acceptor, it accept protons. So what we have is we have CH2, well, we have NH2 on both N. So that was the, that was the formula given to us uh, above here. H2N and then two of that CH2, that's why it's E10, and then two NH2 on both N is called amine. So they've got lone pairs. They got lone pairs on the nitrogen, each of the nitrogen. So when I add it in water, when I add it in water, they are going to be weak base, just like ammonia. Amines are weak bases. So I'll get H3 and, and then CH2, CH2, NH3. But when I accept a proton, I now have four covalent bonds around the nitrogen. Previously, I have one and two to the two hydrogen and one to the carbon. Three covalent bonds, no charged nitrogen. Nitrogen now has one, two, and three hydrogens, and one more to the carbon, four covalent bond nitrogens. It has a dative covalent bond. It must have a plus. Now I have a plus on both of these nitrogen, and now I will kick out OH- from the water. And having said that, I need two water because with one water, it will accept H plus there. I get one OH-. Another water reacts with this lone pair here. Give me another OH-, 
and the H plus get protonated by this thing here. So we can see it dissociates in water to give you OH minus. That is the definition of base, but they want brown solari base, which is it accepts the proton from the water. I show using equations. They don't say explain using equations. It's always very common to write a balanced equation to show the partial dissociations, to show the acceptance of proton from the water. Actually, what else do they want? The next one is they would just want these equations, but they don't want the equations uh, the same as above because the above is not a reaction. It's simply the dissociation in water. What do they want now? The one in excess of hydrochloric acid. So in the presence of acid, well, it's pretty much the same. I will get HCl instead of water. And then I will have two of that H plus from the HCl. It's no longer an equilibrium. It's a full reaction. Both of them will protonate and accept the H plus from the acid. And now instead of OH minus, I will get water. I will get two water one of the H plus, uh, am I correct? No, 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 no. I don't get water, by the way. Sorry, I don't get water. I get a salt because just like ammonia plus HCl, when you have ammonia plus HCl, you don't see the water because the equation will not balance. Instead, you get ammonium chloride like that. So now this is like two ammonia plus two HCl. You get the dications and you get Cl minus and Cl minus. So what I get is Cl minus two of them. If you want to write a question, uh, I guess it will be CaNH3, CH2, CH2, NH3, like that, and then Cl2. This is without the charges. This is with the charges clearly shown. Plus two, you need two of the minus one there. Balance equation just for that one mark there. The next bit, ethane-1,2-diamine reacts with ethane dioic acid, and you get polymer Z. So what we have is if I draw the skeletal formula, if you will permit me, and then I get ethane dioic acid, which of course is less reactive than the acyl chloride. I should probably use the acyl chloride. The acid loses the OH, not because it's an acid, but because it condenses. This is called condensation reaction. And this OH will be lost as it reacts with the NH2N of another monomer, another monomer, another of these diamine there. So this one will lose the H there. So all together, what I get is, I get a, uh, they say show two repeat units. They don't say draw display, but I am just going to show uh, structural for that bit. But I'm going to display this bit here. So this is the ethane dioic acid bit. And this is the, this is the diamine bit. So if I just show you, this is one of that diamine. And that is one of that ethane dioic acid, CO2H, CO2H, but they want two repeat units. So that is one repeat unit. You can see that is one whole repeat unit. So that is one repeat unit. So if they want two repeat units, well, it's quite easy for me to do on the screen, but you know, you need to try and do it yourself. Uh, probably not as easy, you know, because you need to draw it out yourself. So if I sketch that out. I just need to link the two things together. And now you can see the CO of the ethane dioic acid links to another NH. And then this is another of that monomer and another of that monomer because that is one whole repeat unit. Again, one plus one is two repeat units there. Okay. And of course, showing the open chain because it's part of a polymer. So you must have the open chain. Name the type of reaction during this polymerization. This is called condensation polymerization. It is not addition because you are not adding onto a double bond like in AS. This is part of A2 polymerization, which you also did in IGCSE O level as well as GCSE chemistry as part of polymerization. You learn about the formation of fat, the formation of proteins, uh, and these are all a result of condensation. So condensation kicks out the small molecule. In this case, it kicks out water. If you use acyl chloride, you kick out small molecule like hydrogen chloride HCl. But here you kick out the H2O, you kick out the H2O as it extends to form the polymer condensation, polymerization. And that's the end of that 17 mark question there.